Hello everyone, Kumusta? Welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. I'm so excited because I'm back with another tutorial for all of you who are pursuing um, learning and understanding the Cebuano and uh, Visayan dialect. Uh, before we continue, I would like to ask all of you to please um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And also, if you like this video, uh, please click on the like button. If you also feel that you have some friends or family who can take advantage of this tutorial, uh, feel free to share it to them. Uh, for those of you who are looking for a reference for uh, learning the Cebuano and or Visayan dialect, we do have our uh, official release of a Cebuano tutorial, which is available on Kindle and in paperback uh, from all global Amazon marketplaces. So um, check them out and um, I'm going to see you on the other side. Hi guys, we've finally come to lesson number eight and today's lesson is about um, the naming conventions used in Cebuano and or Visayan dialect for the body parts and any other terminologies that has relevance to the human anatomy. Um, before I proceed with the lesson, I just want to check on each and every one of you. I hope you're all safe and healthy and staying at home and doing your best um, to protect yourself and your family and community um, throughout this challenging times. So um, I'm really glad, you know, if you are staying at home right now and just um, learning with me. In order for us to get this lesson going, I have a quick test for all of you. I have 10 terminologies here that I have listed out and um, I would like each one of you to just assess yourselves quickly and find out if you can actually identify or um, understand the English equivalent of this terminologies. So they are somehow um, perhaps, well, depending on your exposure, really, well, it could be a common term that you hear or not. So um, let's just see. And, um, you know, if you want to find out the equivalent or the answers, you can just um, let the video go on. If not, if you want more time, you can always pause the video. So one, kamot, two, suwang, three, naung, four, likod, five, bugan, six, tudlo, seven, kumago, eight, tikod, nine, kalimotaw, ten, bukog. So, how many do you think can you figure out? Um, I'd say if you have been staying in this islands for a while now, you should at least get about seven out of ten. So, let's find out. So here's the fun part. We will find out how many of the 10 terminologies were you able to successfully um, translate to the English language. So I have even um, put up a teaser here for you. If you got 10 out of 10, then bisdak yudka. That means you're a real 
Sabuano at heart. Bisayang dako or bisdak. So let's see. Kamot, that's the hand. Suwang, that's the chin. Nawong, or sometimes people just um, shorten it by saying naong. That's the face. Likod, that's the back. A bugan is the groin. Or sometimes people would also say bulog. Bulog or bugan refers to the groin. Tudlo. Well, this should be very is easy for, you know, most of you. Tudlo is finger. If you say fingers, mga tudlo. Kumagko. Um, kumagko refers to the thumb. So, either it's the thumb of your hand or the thumb of your foot so that big toe is called kumagko then we have tikod now tikod is the ankle or it is the back of your foot um sometimes we also use this to reference the heel of a a shoe so shoe is sapatos so if we say the heel of a, a pair of shoes so we can just say tikod sa sapatos but pure and simple tikod means ankle nine kalimutao so that's the pupil of the eye it's the part of the eye that that gives the eye the the color the dark you know the dark part and then buko well um i wouldn't say it's a specific body part but still it resembles a very important component of the human anatomy so bukog is bone so how many did you get um, if you got five well congratulations you did well if you get ten well I salute you that means um, you really know the language So to dive quickly into the body parts, we have um, categorized them accordingly, the upper body parts and then the lower body parts. So visualize these parts as we move along. So sa taas nga part is sa lawas, that's the upper side of the body. We have the head, ulo, shoulder, abaga, chest, dughan, rib cage, gusok arm, bukton, hand, kamot. And then for the lower body parts, we have um, the stomach or the belly area that's called tian, lumbar area or the flank area, it's called dapi dapi. And then the buttocks, that's sampot. The legs, that would be paa, mga paa. Feet, that would be mga tiil or tiil sole of the foot that's lapalapa and then the midsole so the middle portion of the sole of the foot is called atay atay so in order for us to have a better understanding of these body parts 
I think it will help if we can visualize them. And the best way to do that would be to um, segregate the parts, um, the upper part from the head, and then the lower part, which is from probably the waist area going down. So let's focus first on the, um, the parts of the head. So this is just a general um, category for the most prominent uh, parts of the head. And then later on, we'll even break them down some more so that you will get a clearer picture of the different body parts. So here we start with the head. The head is ulo, ulo, ulo is head. Cranium. So the cranium is the bony part of your head. And um, sometimes, you know, people would also mistake it as that, that skinny part or the skinny portion on top of the cranium. So it's, it's like whatever you feel that's already hard, that's past the hairline, we call it, you know, bagul, bagul. So it's a repeated term, bagul, bagul. Um, if somebody says, oh, my scalp is itching, then you can just say katol akong bagul bagul or if you say i have a crack on my cranium you can say nabuak ang akong bagul bagul so these two terms Though they are not the same, you know, the cranium is not the scalp because the scalp is obviously the skin over the cranium. But still, in our conventional use of the words, you know, we mean the same thing. Bagul bagul. So whatever we can feel with our hand that's past the the root of the hair that's what we call us bagul bagul so if you have let us say dandruff that would be on your bagul bagul or on your scalp now um next is hair hair is buhok so i hope you know you're you're following with me as we try to visualize this body parts then we go down to the forehead so the term could be buna or it could also be agtang and there's no specific um, convention to use you know if you're in Cebu or if you are in Mindanao um, you can just interchange um, either buna or agtang. Then we go down to the face that is naung or naung. Then to be specific, we have the cheek. So that's called aping. And then next we have the chin. So chin is suwang. Then, followed by the eyes. Oh, you can just say eye is mata. The set of eyes you have is manga mata. Then we have nose. That's your ilong. Now, the ears. Um, there are several ways of enunciating this word because 
usually if you're from Mindanao, you would say Dalungan. So you take the like the longer version. But if you're in Cebu, perhaps you just say Dungan or to make, to put emphasis, you can also say Daungan. So either of these terms, the Lungan, Daungan, Dungan, they all refer to the ears. Again, ear for Dungan, and then if you want to be specific, make it plural. You can just say Manga Daungan. Then base of the neck. So the base of the neck, we have a term for that. It's like um, that part where sometimes, you know, you feel tension, headache at the back, at the back of your neck. We call that tangkugo. Tangkugo. Then we have neck, the neck itself. That's called li og, li og. And then the mouth. So we have ba ba, ba ba. So uh, just take note of the way they are pronounced, because you might be tempted to say ba ba. And that doesn't connote, you know, that body part at all. So it should be said with emphasis, ba ba. So there's like a glottal sound in each um, syllable, ba ba. And then we have lips. So for the lips, you can just say. Ngabil or Simud or Wait. Now, again, uh, there's no specific term to be used when you're in Cebu or when you're in other parts of the Visayan region. But overall, Ngabil is understood as lips. Now, some people would like to use like the more informal term, which is simud. And simud actually, if we go to like the strict stra translation, simud is like the snout. So the equivalent of a snout of say an animal, You're like uh, you have a like um, the snout of a tiger. So you can just say simud. So it's like the, the protruding um, portion, you know, around the mouth area. That's what we call us simud. And of course, you can also say wait. So wait probably is more commonly used um, in Cebu. So either way, you know, when, when you say ngabil, simud, or wait, it doesn't make much of a difference. Though, um, take note that we do like to point things or show direction using um, our, our lips. So when we do purse our lips to show direction, you can just um, somehow figuratively say, oh, that's the simud, because now you are like mimicking a snout. So I hope, you know, that's that's easy enough for you to to visualize. Then we have tongue. The tongue, which is called a double-edged sword. That's your dila. Dila for the tongue. Then we have the throat. So, you know, when you swallow something, it goes down your throat or tilaok. Um, tilaok is more or less related to like animals. Like, for example, a, a chicken or a rooster, when they do the like that. They, they crow in the morning. 
so we call that also a tilaok but you know based on the location you can either say tilaok or tutunlan or ubul ubul so the difference is when you say tutunlan it's more of the like the inside part but when you say ubul ubul it's more of the like the outside part of the throat area so it's like the meaty part that you can see you know right when you're looking at a person whereas when you say tutunlan then that's the, like the the inside part a person literally has to open his mouth in order for you to see the tutunlan then next we have gums we call it lagos lagos for the gum and then okay the most important one teeth or ngipon and then jaw so the jaw or the jaw line that's called the apapangig or like you know the bony part the bony part um in your um mouth or that part that you use to like chew chew down food um, that's that's your um bagang or apapangig bagang or apapangig so when somebody would say oh um sakit ang akong apapangig they're saying that you know their their jaw a portion of their jaw is hurting and that's different from saying oh sakit akong ngipon because when you say sakit ang ngipon that's uh, like a toothache so the jaw is different from the teeth now let's continue with the next part which is parts that are now from the shoulder down so we finish with the top part the head and most of anything that we can remember that's in the head um i'm sure there is still a few things that i haven't mentioned like um the eyelashes and the eyebrows but then you know you can just look for that anyways um let's continue the shoulder is abaga so the shoulder or the shoulder blade that's called the abaga then the chest so if you're a man you know that part that portion is called dughan or even with a woman you know the chest area is called dughan and then if you are female you have like um a mammary gland you know we call it tutoy or susu now i'm not saying that men don't have this as part of their anatomy but i guess um my point here is this is more pronounced with um women so if let us say you're in public and then you hear somebody say oh she is a nagpasusu that means that this woman is breast feeding so from the word susu which is the breast nagpasusu that's breast feeding then we go to the underarm so 
underarm is simply e look e look then if you have hair in your underarm you call the hair balhibo balhibo of what well the underarm so you say balhibo sa ilok and then how do you call the upper arm so we call it buktun so either buktun or braso now buktun sometimes can refer to like the whole arm but when you say braso braso is more of like the upper the upper arm you know where, where you have your your bra your biceps and triceps so that's that's what they call um what we call braso in fact um sometimes this could be um confused as you know muscle some people would say oh you have such huge braso which they mean the muscle in your arm but yeah when we say braso it's mostly you know that that very pronounced portion of the upper arm then we have elbow elbow is the siko so if you you know somebody would accidentally hit you and you can just say oh you know why did you why did you let your sickle touch me you know so if somebody would purposely elbow you then that would be um said as gisiko so gi that's an act siko is the elbow so the the act of elbowing is gisiko then we have okay we got this already hands mga kamot then the rest wrist wrist like when you're wearing a wrist watch the wrist is pulso now if you go and try to figure out okay why is that pulso well apparently on your wrist you can also feel the pulse so that's just how we call it the wrist portion of your hand is called pulso then we have fingers now they're all fingers plural so we say mga tudlo what's next palm the palm of your hand so that that's pronounced as palad or if you're in Cebu we just say pad so if let us say palad sa ungwe that's the palm of a monkey um pad sa ungwe that's the palm of a monkey and because monkey is ungwe and there is a common expression that says bilay pad sa ungwe meaning to say you know even even a monkey has a 50 50 chance of like say winning something say winning the lottery so it's basically an expression that means even a lowly um animal like a monkey could be still lucky because he has it has rather two palm the left and the right palm so in Cebuano that's you know pad sa ungoy or palad sa ungoy it's a figurative way of um expressing that um context now we have nail nail is koko then again here's something which is not obviously you know one body part but i know for a fact that it is the biggest organ of your body which is your skin 
So it's called panit. Panit. Then, um, for those th um, veins that you see, spider veins or like protruding veins, any vein that you can see, you know, vein is ugat. So now let's continue with the visualization. And we are now starting from below the navel. So the navel is just, you know, we call it the belly button or the more medically accepted term is the umbilicus. So we call that as pusud. Pusud. And then the stomach or we just call it the belly portion, the belly area, we call that as tian. The waistline, that's called hawak. And then the hips, or the hip area is called batang. Then, the buttocks, we call that as samput. And then the anus is called lubot. Or there's also another term for that. Um, in the Visayan language, it's called igot, igot. So it's specific. It's, it's like, you know, the, the anal opening. It's called igot igot. Then the crotch area is called pus on. Pus on. Now don't get confused with the belly button because um, somehow they they almost you know sound the same the one is pusud and then the other one is pus on so just uh, make sure you are able to differentiate these two the crotch area is called pus on so for example if you want to to pee so badly you can just say Sakit akong pus on, meaning to say, you know, I can feel the pressure right in in my like my crotch area, like I'm I'm so ready to to pee or to you know go take a pee, go to the bathroom, pus on. Now the groin, I we have already mentioned this one, groin bugan. Or um, some people say bulog. So bulog or bugan. Either way, that refers to the groin area. Now, um, we have a general term for the, either the male or the female genitalia. So we call it as kinatao. So it's... it's genderless genderless basically you know kinat when you say kinatao that refers to like the sexual organ but if you want to be specific you know when we talk about um, the male organ the penis so the terms vary we have otin pikoi titi Tintin, boto, um, this uh, boto is only specific for boholanos. And then when we talk about the female organ, you know, um, the, the vagina. So these are the translations. 
um, just a word of caution if even if they may be I mean um, coming from like a, a very open setup it may be okay to hear um, the English term you know vagina yet when you are in um, the setting like you know in the Philippine setting either you're in Cebu or in the neighboring islands it is considered uh, too vulgar to even name this uh, like this uh, sexual parts so when you say bilat puday kiki bisong boto you know it's it's considered as though you are like you almost have no no tack so they the i think the only exception is when these terms are being um talked about with reference to like a, a medical you know a medical scenario or a medical condition so so try as much as you can to <laughs> limit um, saying these words especially in public because um, people might give you that crazy look like oh what's going on with you but yeah that's just the that's just the culture so you can you can still say say some of these words but then um again um some people also have this um almost like a filler an ad lib you know if if they they fall or they stumble and they have like this this personalized expression like they say utin sa kabayo so kabayo is horse and then you know utin is like the female organ so now you get the like the picture you know so it's 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 almost as if you can equate it to to a form of cursing but you know don't don't misunderstood me uh, don't misinterpret um, what I'm trying to explain to you all I'm saying is um, it could sound too vulgar to to refer to this like specific Cebuano and Orvisayan words um ref referring to the the female and the male uh, genitalia then we have pubic hair um pubic hair is specific it is um called bulbul so when you say bulbul you mean the hair that's part of the sexual organ um, if you have a hair in your armpit you cannot say that as bulbul you simply call that as balhibo and then going down we have the upper leg okay that's called pa'a pa'a and then going down we have the knee two hood the knee is two hood two of your knees that would be manga two hood and then going down further we have the the calves or the calf muscles we call that bug tuck so they even have this um presupposition that if you you know you are from the mountains you keep on walking day in and day out then you really have very pronounced bug tuck so they say dako meaning big og bug tuck so big calf muscles and that's from the strain of you know walking back and forth more often than 
um, needed. Then we have the lower leg. So the portion that's from the knee down, that whole portion that's called your bati is or biti is. Um, the foot is your ti il, ti il. And then we have the foot sole. So the sole of your feet, that's called lapa, lapa. And then here we have the ankle. So previously I have mentioned the ankle and it's called tikud. So the, the back of your, your foot is tikud, but some people say kiting. Now, if you are in Mindanao, perhaps, you are more familiar with saying kiting. But in the strictest sense, kiting is like the, the Achilles tendon. So if you, you look at the back of your foot, there's like a, like a tendon, a very um, pronounced tendon right there that you can, you can feel. So that's what we call as kiting. Then, you know, if, if you look from under your foot and you, you're already feeling the sole of your foot, which is called lapa lapa, the mid portion, you know, that like the, the, the middle part of that sole is called atai atai, atai atai. Well, um, I just learned of this actually. Um, I spoke to one of my relatives that's, you know, a bit older and she told me that, oh, that's how you call that portion of the, the middle of the sole of the feet. It's called atay atay. So at this point, I'm just gonna write down or um, weed out, you know, the specific considered body part names that are, in a way, they stand out for a reason because of the fact that these these words actually sound like they are repeated, and in fact, they are repeated. So this is probably an, just an additional fun fact that, you know, next time when you're in a group of people, you can just ask the other people and say, okay, you know Cebuano or you know Visayan? Well, give me at least five body parts that are repeated, you know, and everyone would be looking at you like, oh, Wow, he is some sort of a Cebuano or Visayan dialect genius. But you know, this is this words are worth knowing. So you must have noticed some of these words already. Uh, we've we've encountered some of these words earlier. So let's start with. Bagul bagul, so it's the scalp or the cranial or the skeletal enclosure of the head. Then buku buku, buku buku is the backbone. So if you're spineless, then people would say walai buku buku, walakai buku buku, wakai buku buku, meaning to say. You have no backbone. Kasing kasing. Kasing kasing is the heart. So, who among you have no kasing kasing? Nobody. Okay, we all have a heart. So, yet, you know, 
we will literally have each one of us need a heart to stay alive but um, there's also a figurative way of saying um, that you know some people are heart are heartless so we say why kasing kasing so those are the kind of people that are ruthless they have no empathy for other people so it's it's a little depressing to hear that when somebody would come to you and tell you wakai kasing kasing now we have the dapi dapi it's called you know the the it's the section between the the rib cage and the lower hip so there's an area there uh, you can even call it as the flank area um, if you want to know more of this then go find a a graph of the human anatomy and locate the section it's called dapi dapi next we have again ba ba the mouth you know that already lukon lukon now i don't know um i don't know if this there's a one term for that in the english language somehow i couldn't find the term so i just use you know the description which is the back of the knee so we have a term for that that's lukun lukun and i remember that so well because when we were kids when we were young my mother would always you know every time we we take a bath my mother would always remind us and by saying make sure you know you you rub that portion your lukun lukun get rid of all the dirt from your lukun lukun or the back of the knee and then uh, bull bull that's the pubic hair ubul ubul so i have already partly discussed this earlier too meaty part of the throat area and um i only hear of this actually when say sometimes you know you you're listening to a news report of like a gruesome you know incident wherein somebody's ubul ubul is being like cut you know as part of the the crime or something you know very very tragic so that's that's how i picture that in my head the ubul ubul so it's like the outside part that you can actually feel it's got the meaty portion of the the throat area and then again you've heard of this too lapa lapa is the sole of the foot atay atay sati il it's the midsole of the foot tabun 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 is the eyelid you know um, as i've mentioned earlier there were portions that i wasn't able to really include as we were trying to dissect the portions of the head so the eyelid is called tabun tabun it's like tabun from the root word tabun which is to cover and your your eyelid you know covers your eyes so that's tabun tabun is the eyelid now we also have this koto koto um some people would say you know when they they panic or when they are in a like a a distressed mode um they would they would tell you oh feel my koto koto and you can you can hear the like the loud thumping of my heart so that's like the 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 mid portion of your chest area and sometimes also for people with like um or people who are prone to experiencing heartburn 
that's the area, that area where you feel the heartburn, the pain. That's called koto koto. So this one, I have also mentioned this earlier. It's called igot igot. Now I'm pretty sure that this term is only common in um, Mindanao because I I don't think I've heard this um, term in Cebu but this is exactly what it is it's the anal opening that's what's called the igot igot so after all that have you learned enough yet and um, perhaps I failed to mention earlier that this lesson would be quite easy because we will not be dealing with you know grammar and proper usage. It's we're just basically translating from, you know from English to the Cebuano and or Visayan equivalent of the different body parts. However, you know, it wouldn't be that worthwhile if you don't get a chance to learn a few of the common expressions. Um, I will translate the expressions. Some of them are literal and some of them are figurative. So they are, they are meant as a, like a figure of speech to, to represent, you know, something. So it has a, a different non-literal context to the use of the phrase. So bear with me and I promise you after this, you will really be able to understand so much more about the, like the usage of the phrases in the English, I mean the Cebuano and the Visayan dialect. So let's start with the first one. Niya ya nga panit. Niya ya. Ya ya is a term you use to mean something that's sagging. So it's it's not tight. It is sagging. Sagging due to probably aging or gravity over time so niya ya you are describing a condition that it has sagged niya ya nga panit that means skin that has sagged panit is skin kunot nga panit kunot means a wrinkle you know it's either wrinkled or crumpled looking so kunot nga panit simply means wrinkled skin. Hamis. Hamis nga panit. So we are all talking about the skin. Hamis is smooth. So young people have hamis nga panit or smooth skin. Ha'it ugoko. Ha'it is sharp. So when you say ha it o koko, that means koko is nails, sharp nails. Kasap o kamot. I like this word, kasap. Um, it's like it's easily remembered. Because when you say kasap, it means rough. So what's rough? Kamot, which is the hand. So a working hand is kasap o gamot, meaning to say rough hands. What kind of hand? Rough. So rough, a, ra, a rough pair of hands is called kasap o gamot or kasap nga kamot. Gikubalan nga kamot. Why is it rough? Because there are calluses. So, kubal is callus. 
so those dry skin that builds up on the the outer portion or the outer layer of the skin that's called kubal so gikubalan nya kamot that means it's a hand that's calloused and thus gikubalan nya kamot is also kasap nya kamot so any kamot that is gikubalan or callous or any callous hand is also a rough hand now hiwi ngati il hiwi means crooked not straight so it's either hiwi not straight or crooked or deformed ngati il what's deformed the il which is the foot Balikog nga tudlo. Now, balikog is also crooked. So, it, meaning it's not straight. It's it's just crooked. And um, some of us probably have that condition wherein, you know, from playing sports, we break one or two fingers and then it stays like that. It stays crooked for life. So we can call that as balikog nga tudlo, which is crooked finger. Bati ugnaong. Now this one is a little mean because um, sometimes, you know, when you say a person is beautiful, I, I don't really, uh, you know, by that a person is ugly or beautiful because to me beauty is in the eye of the beholder so it's it's very subjective uh, one person may look beautiful to me and he may not be beautiful to another person so let us just say it's you know it's a subjective observation the, the beauty that you can perceive with your eyes. But then when you say bati ug naong, you know, the naong is face and bati is ugly. So you're saying someone has an ugly face. Bati ug naong. Now I'm saying this to you so that you can understand, but I'm really hoping that you wouldn't go to the extent of you know going after somebody and vocally maligning them by saying but it ka og now you know so please uh, this is just for you to be able to understand it but i'm really hoping that you would be able to hold off and you know not use this this terminologies to address someone and then nindut og lawas now lawas is the body you know the body as a whole but when you say nindut that means it's it's shapely it's curvaceous it's got all the wills no it's got all the bells and whistles, rather. So, nindot oglawas is another term for saying sexy. And we have a term for that. You know, when we say sexy, we, 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 can, we also say sexy in our dialect, but we spell it differently. But we mean the same thing. But overall, when you say, you know, nindot oglawas, you are appreciating like a, a beautiful or curve you know curvaceous body with all the right proportions then lapad og ilong well i'm guilty of this one lapad og ilong lapad meaning it's flat and ilong is nose so when you say lapad og ilong that means flat nosed and I am flat nosed and I'm so proud of that because 
you know not many people realize that when you you have this like a different feature that is very uncommon it in a way makes you look you know exotic you know especially if you know in my case i came from the philippines but then i was also able to travel to other places and even live in a different place so of course while i was in the philippines you might feel a little um insulted when somebody would say oh lapad ka og ilong meaning to say oh you have a flat nose but then no once you come to a different place and then you know you really stand out because you look different you have a different facial profile and just the added you know flat nose <laughs> profile to me you know to me that's an advantage it it really makes you look so exotic and that's a very good thing then lagom og panit lagom is like it's dark so anything that's darkened or like a darker shade that's what we call us lagom and panit is skin so lagom og panit that means you know you are you are dark skin not necessarily um black skin but you have like a natural tan um in the if, in the philippines this is a funny thing in the philippines you can sell bleach you know for the skin and you literally make a lot of money because it will sell because people uh, don't realize most people don't realize that the the color of our skin is this beautiful you know it's like naturally beautiful so people um somehow relate the color of the skin to the the social status because you know probably when you have a fair fairer complexion you have a lighter skin you probably work inside a building you know you're not exposed to the sun you're in an air conditioned room but when you have like a darker skin that means that you you are doing hard labor you are working under the sun so that's how you know there is like um disconnect between the like the perception of the difference with respect to the color of the skin so again i said that it's a funny thing because if you sell bleach skin bleach products in the philippines it would sell but come to a different place like come to the us none of that would sell you know what would sell here like a, a, a tanning lotion or any like a tanning machine or a tanning service so you know there is no like general rule as to how your skin should be but i think what we should learn is you know however we are made how we look we should all be able to to learn to like appreciate appreciate that look because you know what may be beautiful here may not be beautiful over there or what may be is considered ugly there is is beautiful here so um no offense at all you know i i mean no offense i'm just i'm just trying to to give like a view on why you know this thing lagom ug panit matters so lagom ug panit meaning to say you are you're dark skinned or you easily you know get darkened when you are exposed to the sun and i'm like that too and i like it then we have himsog nga lawas now earlier i said nindot which refers to like a sexy you know physique but when you say himsog himsog is healthy 
So now the difference is this. When you say himsugalawas, you mean you actually mean a fit, you know, a fit body. Then we have baho og ilok. Now, if you hear this, that this is kind of insulting. Baho og ilok, meaning to say you have really like uh, a, a bad underarm, you know, order issue. So that needs to be addressed. Baga og simud, or what it. Um, this goes back to, you know, the way people look at each other as well. Um, it's very subjective. So back in my country, in the Philippines, people would probably wish, oh, I wish I had thinner lips because that's what you see on TV. You know, those people look pretty and beautiful with, you know, the kind of... The, the set of thin lips that they have, it looks so delicate. Yet, you know, when you go to other places and you have this feature, people actually look at you and say to you, oh, wow, you look beautiful with with your, your thick lips. Your, it's like you're so... Uh, all the more that you are, you know, exotic looking. So all Filipinas out there, be proud, you know, be proud of how you look. You know, the pronouns, um, lips, big lips, fat lips, our flat nose, our dark skin. It's all, you know, a very very good um, physical feature and we should be proud of that because that's you know that's like the typical Filipina look then this one manukun og mata now this could be uh, like sometimes it, it, it could mean um, somewhat derogatory because manukun, the, the word here, the root word here is manuk. It's like the chicken. And when you have literally this expression, manukun ugmata, somehow the person telling it is describing one who has some, probably a slight degree of like having, you know, cross-eyed you know that kind of vision where you look at a person and they look a bit cross-eyed so this one is it's, it's in a way not a good expression to say to somebody but i'm just um, laying it out here so that if you hear that you know you understand what it means baga ukilai you know baga ukilai baga is thick Kilai is the eyebrows. And then, bawud og pilok. Pilok is the eyelashes. And then when you say bawud, so it's wavy or it's curly. Curly lashes. Puti og kalimotaw. Now the kalimotaw, like I've said earlier, is the, the pupil of the eye. So it's that, that dark portion in your eyes. Now when you say puti ug kalimotao, you know, have you seen somebody that has that portion, like the pupil in the eye, the dark spot in that eye? Have you actually seen somebody that has a white, you know, pupil? No. So sometimes people when they wait for somebody or someone or for something and then it has taken a long time like they've waited enough time and it's just more in fact more than enough time and then they would just say oh what happened to you i've been waiting here for forever in fact you know in fact 
niputi na ang akong kalimutao. Meaning to say, it, it's it's like an almost like an ironic description, which is, you know, it's like when the when the black crow turns white. So um, it's a figure of speech, meaning to say, you know, so much time has elapsed that even what was conventional has now been altered. That you know, even the, you know the the pupil of the eye that seems to be so dark, mine has already like turned white because of all the time that I have waited for you. Like it has taken eternity to wait for you. So it's just a a figure of speech, meaning to say, oh, you took forever, and thus, you know, I'm using this expression to tell you how long I have waited. So, niputi na ang akong kalimutaw, which is basically an impossibility. Then, let's say, dako ugtian. Dako is big. Tian is belly, big belly. Nipis ug samput. Um, some people would always find fault in others, you know. And um, as far as Asians are concerned, we don't have this very pronounced, you know, backside. So we, you could say nipis. Nipis is thin. So we have really like a thin backside or meaning to say we really just don't have that very pronounced you know butt area and we probably need to exercise more in order to change that and then this too you know so when i say nipis og samput and then sapyut og lubot so this too can be interchanged so the meaning is similar. Sapyut o glubot. Lubot is again the backside or the rear area or the, you know the, the buttocks, the, the bottom. Um, sapyut sometimes you know it it it's more on the the posture of a person. Because some people, even if they have like yeah, they have a nicely shaped butt area, and yet, you know, the way they stand up is that they really don't hold their their body, you know, um, tall enough. So it it kind of shows that you know posture, where in the backside looks a little thinner than it actually is. So that's the difference. So when a piece of example, it's it's more on you know the actual composition, like you just don't have enough muscles there. But when you say sapiot o glubot, it could be like either both, you know, like you don't have the composition there. Plus, it's possible that you have the composition there, that you have you know enough butt muscles, but yet, you know, you don't have the the correct posture to be able to carry yourself you know tall and have that area you know more pronounced lamorok og aping so aping is the cheek lamorok meaning it's chubby you know chubby like if you have like a little baby and they have just this like really chubby cheeks then you can say Lamorok og aping. Guapa og naong. So when you say naong face, guapa is beautiful. So guapa og naong, that's just a beautiful face. You can just simply say guapa. You know, in, in general term, guapa. The the beauty is is emphasized to refer to the the, the facial structure. And then taas og ilong. Taas is like you have like a, a, a nicely shaped 
well-pronounced um, nose. That's what it is. Then, baga nga buhok. So if you have, you're talking about the hair, the hair is buhok. Baga nga buhok is thick, thick hair. Then, hamis ugutis. So I, I have mentioned that earlier, hamis is smooth. Kutis is the complexion. So when you say hamis ugutis, that means the skin, the complexion, the texture. It's, it's like it, it's very smooth, very youthful. Baslay nga buhok. Well, a few people probably don't know this, even those who who live in in you know around the area. But I know this for sure because you know back then in the days, I could easily just like move my hair and then like my hair would just fall down to the sides so the when the hair has enough body you can call it baslay nga buhok so a hair that is voluminous enough that it has enough body it just falls to the side especially if you have you know, if you have a straight hair, like most Asians. And then, uh, lapad ug batang. So, lapad is wide, batang is hip. So, this could be, um, in a way, related to the, uh, how do you call that one? For, for a woman, that means you have better chances of um, having easy birthing. You know, if you ever get pregnant, um, they say it's easier for you to give birth if you, ha you already have the advantage of wide hips. Dangas ogagtang. Now this one is another. Sometimes it could be used um, as a form of a derogatory remark. So it's describing the so-called hair is vanishing syndrome. That you know your forehead, you have so much forehead already. So. If somebody says to you, dangas og agtang or dangas og buna, agtang or buna is the forehead, and dangas meaning it's it's just it's just wide, it's just extra wide, it's just extra pronounced. So the first thing that you look at, the first thing that you see is the like the wide forehead. That is what is meant by dangas og agtang. Balbon is just short for balhibuon or balhibu is hair, balhibuon is hairy, so balbon means a hairy person. Homok og ilong. Now homok is soft. Now who doesn't have like, like a hard I mean, who doesn't have like a, a soft, you know, nose? I mean, your nose has a cartilage and it's, you know, it's it's soft on some some portion of your nose. It's mostly soft, in fact. But this expression, homok og ilong, is a figurative um, phrase, which means... Um, a person who has no conviction, a person who has no principle, a person who can be easily swayed, a person who can be easily influenced. That's what is meant by humok og ilong. So it's like um, if you tell one of your friends that, oh, we have to we have to do this. But then the person would say, oh no, I'm not going to do that. 
but then you ask two more times and then the person will say oh okay yeah yeah i'll do that and you know for a fact that you know it might not be the right decision to say yes but because you are not principled enough to stick to your guns then somebody could just say to you oh you know homoka og ilong meaning to say you are not principled so it is in a way it is derogatory and then this one i have mentioned this in passing earlier why kasing kasing so no heart kasing kasing is heart meaning you're heartless you're ruthless you don't feel for anyone else you know you cannot empathize with other people's pain so that's what it means why kasing kasing another figurative you know phrase taas ug suwang taas is long suwang is the chin so if you are cold or somebody tells you taas ug suwang that means you have a very pronounced you know chin puti ug ngipon um i think this is redundant because your teeth is you know normally or naturally white but then um if you go to third world countries that will that would not always be the case so yeah when you say puti that means white ngipon is the teeth puti o ngipon so when you have pearly whites that means puti o So I guess we have covered most of everything that you need to know about the human anatomy and even extra phrases. And um I just want to add a few more words for you that might help you. You know. So it helps to know this parts. Yeah. Uh, do you have a brain? Uh na akay utok. Yeah, of course we all do. Well, um brain is utok. Kalimutaw is the iris or the pupil of the eye. And then teeth is ngipon. Heart is kasing-kasing. Lungs that's called baga baga now there's a difference when you know there's another word it's called baga baga means thick but when you say lungs it's called baga liver that's atay bladder pantog cervix that's the that's called matres and then in addition these are also a few more um terms that you could probably you know add to your vocabulary so learn these terms cough ubo fever hilanat headache sakit sa ulo runny nose that's sip on or gisip on muscle aches trangkaso sweat singot blood dugo phlegm plema um if you pass out or you faint then or you fainted then you could say nakuyapan um so i think we have covered pretty much everything right uh there's one more thing difficulty in breathing so when you breathe that's ginhawa and the difficulty is described as lisod so lisod o ginhawa you can just say oh naglisod ko o ginhawa 
meaning to say you have a difficulty in breathing and I think that's pretty much it um, if there's anything else that I missed well um, I've tried so hard to be comprehensive with this tutorial and I'm really hoping that most of you learned um, so much out of this um, lesson 8 that we had today so I really appreciate all of you. I want to thank everyone, you know, for subscribing to this channel. Um, before we go, as usual, I have this extra phrase that um, we would translate and then somehow, you know, get to the bottom of the the context or the message that is being conveyed by the phrase so don't worry we will do a literal translation then the complete translation and then a better alternate translation so let me just read this to you naglibog ko kung anong di ka kasabot nako ug sa akong gihangyo kanimo basin wa lang yud kay utok o wa kay kasing-kasing pero pasabta ko no kubi kung nganong imong gipanabi sa uban nga humok ko og ilong so we tried to use some of the phrases that i taught you earlier but then I would, you know, explain them again to you so that you can have a better understanding of, you know, how Cebuano and Visayan is being um, constructed to make sense. So naglibog, the root word is libog, which is confuse. Um, ko, that's a ko, I, kung anong. Kung anong, um, when translated, that means as to why, you know, D, D is short for dili, which is no, or not, D, ka, ka is short for ikaw, which is you, kasabot, again, sabot is understand, nako, nako is me, Og, og means and sa akong gihangyo. Hangyo is request. Gihangyo, you know, something that I requested. And when you say ako, so that's my request. I have requested something. Kanimo, that's you. For you. Basin, basin is maybe or perhaps. Wa is short for wala. So, wa lang good. There's emphasis good. So, wa, so not lang is just good, re, uh, really. So, it might be that you just don't really wala good kai uto. Wa kai uto. You have no brains. Lang you just really it's just that you don't have brains o wa kai kasing kasing or wa you don't have ka ka i that's ka you kasing kasing that's heart so or you don't have a heart pero pero means um but Pasabta. So the root word is sabot. When you say pasabta, it's something that needed to be done. So it's in the future. Pasabta, that means make me understand. Kuno, like, you know, somehow. Ko, ako, I, B. B is short for ambi. Ambi, like give it to me. Kung anong, you know, as to why, 
imo nga so imong is imo nga gipanabi tabi is to say or talk so when you say gipanabi somebody rumored or gossiped where sa uban nga humok ko og ilong uban is others so that means other people and then here comes the figurative uh, phrase humok ko og ilong meaning to say you know i have no conviction so study the phrase and here i have the translation i am confused just why you can't understand me and with what i requested from you perhaps you don't have a brain or you don't have a heart but let me understand just why you were gossiping to others that i am easily swayed so this translation is the closest literal translation to the phrase above now if i am like a speaker of the language the cebuano language i can even like improve the translation so that you know what i was trying to convey is expressly detailed in the alternate translation so the first one again is a complete close literal translation but the second translation is an improvised translation that will more easily convey the message that i wanted to say so this expression in cebuano or the phrase that i have ab above here now if i um would like to to mean you know the whole context of what i want to to channel through the message this would be the translation that would aptly describe what i have written on top i am utterly troubled why you couldn't possibly understand me and consider what i ask of you either you're so stupid so that part where it says basin wala lang yud kay utok so you have no brains meaning you're stupid or wa kay kasing kasing you have no heart so i'm i'm writing here so insensitive that you really can't empathize with me so this insensitive that you really can't empathize with me is now the part which says wa kay kasing kasing but do let me understand why you dared to gossip about me telling others that i am easily influenced and not principled so there you go there's the translation and um if you have a better understanding of you know how the the words are constructed and the phrases you know wh whether they're literal or figurative um uh, speech in terms of the usage then you will be able to like concoct or like create a much better translation that would be able to convey the exact message that you want to convey so i hope that really was um a fruitful um almost what is this more than an hour session for all of us today and for all of you who are looking for a reference material again we have books that are now available on all amazon global marketplaces that you can take advantage of and also i'm asking all of you to please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and also you know share it to your friends your families and to anyone that you know who could 
also you know learn and enjoy from this uh, tutorials daghan kaayong salamat ug maayong adlaw kanatong tanan god bless